she's wonderful. I tell her every day she's the best daughter I have. She's the only one I have, but that doesn't make any difference. She's the best daughter I have by far. And I'm very proud of her. And it's one of the great parts of the campaign is being able to travel around a little bit with some members of the family, spend a lot of time with Terry, which is great news for me. Bad news for her, though. A lot of time together at the back of the bus. And Carly has joined us for a couple of days. It's, it's great to have her with us. I want to thank all of you for being here today. It is cold, wet, and miserable out there but it is warm and cheerful in here. We can always take some consolation in knowing that under the Canadian Constitution, weather is a federal responsibility. <laughs> so don't blame Mark and don't blame me. <laughs> Mark, um, I can't begin to t tell you how proud I am. I want to thank you so much for standing as our candidate here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Mark and I have something in com common. We both grew up in a family of ten. Which meant that marriage for us was a new experience because growing up in such a crowded environment, we never slept alone until we were married. <laughs> I'm glad you got that one. Uh, and Mark, is it your mom who's over here? Yeah. What, it's Agnes? Yeah. Yeah. Agnes, thank you so much for being here. It's been said that the apple never falls far from the tree. He's a good, honest, decent man of integrity, and he got that from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Je vous demanderai encore une fois de faire tout ce qui est possible pour faire certain qu'il nous représente après l'élection euh, le, le 6 octobre. I want to thank all of you for everything that you are doing together to support Mark. I want to... Where's Bob? Bob, maybe there's... Where did Bob go? Did he leave on me? I don't give you that good name. got different rules applying here. That's okay. <laughs> Bob, it's great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. And thank you for your support. And thanks for your commitment to public service. Thank you. You know... Uh, I know some people are down on politics, but for Mark and myself and our team, politics remain an honorable, noble calling. It's the way we come together. It's the way that we bring each other together. It's the way we do good things for each other. And at our very best, we can actually do great things for each other. So I thank you, Mark, once again for your commitment to public service. Thank you. You know, Mark, uh, Mark wisely made reference to the uh, gathering clouds in a global economy. And the fact is, these are serious times, and they call for a serious plan. The good news is, is that we turn and face this global economic challenge from a position of strength. Let me tell you about some of the things we've got going for us here in Ontario, the greatest province the best country in the world. First of all, we've got the best schools in the English-speaking world. We've got the shortest wait times in Canada. We're Canada's number one job producer, right here. We're the number one producer of cars in North America. We've got the fastest growing clean energy sector in North America. Yeah. Something else a lot of people don't know, but we are, after California, the world's favorite place to invest, bringing in foreign investment into Ontario. That means jobs and business expansions and new businesses and all those kinds of things. So as I say, we begin this, this journey. We can stare into the oncoming headwinds from a position of strength, and with energy, enthusiasm, and optimism. But we're not just going to rest on our laurels. We're going to keep building a stronger economy. One part of our plan has to do with building the strongest workforce in the world. Right now in Ontario, 64% of our adults have a post-secondary education. That's the highest among the 34 OECD countries. 20% higher than the US, twice as high as the UK, 
It's more than Scandinavian countries, Japan, Germany, Austria, Australia, you name it, we're number one. So how do we keep building a stronger workforce? Well, we start at the beginning with full day kindergarten in all our schools for all our four and five year olds. And at the other end, we're going to cut tuition by 30% for our low and middle income families. You know, I like to remind people, I like to remind people, my grandmother was married at the age of 16. She had her grade eight education. She married a man who was 32. He had his grade eight education. But I'm standing before you here today as premier of the greatest province in the best country in the world because of great quality, publicly funded education in Ontario. Another part of our plan to strengthen our economy is to invest in infrastructure. That's roads and bridges and schools and hospitals and public transit and we're also rebuilding our electricity system. Not only does that improve our quality of life and make for a more productive and more efficient economy, but it creates tens of thousands of jobs right now when we need them. The last thing I'll touch on by way of part of our plan to strengthen the economy is our plan to ensure that Ontario is the leader in North America when it comes to clean energy. And I'm going to tell you a little story connected with that. Over 100 years ago, there was a business just, uh, just outside of Oshawa. It was called J.G. McLaughlin. And you know what they made? Horse buggies. It was a pretty big operation they had there. In fact, it was the biggest in the British Empire. They were rolling one horse buggy off their little assembly line every 10 minutes. It was remarkable. One day, Mr. McLaughlin came into the workplace and said, folks, we're no longer going to make buggies. People said, well, why? He said, the world is changing. We're going to make cars. That place, J.G. McLaughlin, is now called GM. Right? Wow. So, last year was the first year that the world invested more in clean energy than they did in fossil fuels. The world is changing. The choice that we have is, are we going to follow or are we going to lead? We choose to lead. We want to make Ontario the best place in North America to build the renewable technologies, solar panels, wind turbines, electric cars, electric car batteries, and all the supply chains, all the parts, and all the jobs, and all the opportunities for our children and our grandchildren. It's about seeing into the future and doing what's necessary today to succeed tomorrow. It's as simple as that. And by the way, that cleans up our air. And it's certainly something we want to give to our kids and our grandkids. I think a really important question that weighs heavily on the minds of Ontario families today is this. Who's on our side? Who's got our back? And I want you to remember back in 2008 when the recession hit us hard, and it especially hit our auto sector hard, and we took a stand to provide support to those 400,000 mums and dads who worked in that sector, who counted on those paychecks to raise their families, strengthen their communities, and look forward to the future with a sense of optimism. We took that stand, and Tim Hudak said to those families, as far as I'm concerned, you're on your own. Remember as well, remember as well, when our party developed a new retraining program for 50,000 workers who'd lost their jobs in the recession, life threw them a curveball, they were down on their knees, we decided to help them get back on their feet and into the race and get a great job. Tim Hudak said, as far as he's concerned, you're on your own. And remember as well, when we took on the big pharmacy companies and we fought to reduce the price of drugs by $500 million in Ontario for the benefit of our, of our families, Tim Hudak took the side of the big pharmacy companies and he said to those families, you're on your own. Hey. Remember when we set up our Eastern Ontario Economic Development Fund to bring money into this region to attract new jobs, attract new investment? Tim Hudak said to these families in this part of our, our province, you're on your own. Hey. This is an important message we've got to get out to Ontario families strong and loudly and hard right now. If you want somebody who's in your corner, if you want somebody who's got your back, if you want somebody who's on your side, if you want somebody who's going to stand up for your jobs, who's going to stand up for retraining should you need it, who's going to stand up for your schools, for full day kindergarten, for lower tuition, for better health care for our seniors, there's only one choice and that's the Ontario Liberal Party.
you realize if you keep this up, we're going to be in this room for four more years. <laughs> so, something I noticed yesterday, an interesting development in the campaign. Minister Flaherty, a very senior minister in the Harper government, weighed in. He made it perfectly clear that their favorite, their strong preference, is Tim Hudak. You know, I can tell you, I've had occasion now to work with three separate Canadian Prime Ministers. It's no secret, if they had their choice, they'd like to have an Ontario Premier who will do as he's told. Right? The problem that they have with me is I don't fit that job description. The problem that we have with Mr. Hudak is that he does. Again, we say to Ontario families, if you want a party that's going to stand up for our province, that's going to stand up for a new 10-year health accord that protects Medicare and improves health care for our seniors, that's going to stand up for our clean energy sector and helps us promote it here in Ontario and throughout North America, there's only one choice, that's the Ontario Liberal Party.